Today I'm going to be talking about the book Freakonomics. It is a very well-known book. Millions of copies have been sold. It's about economics and then it also makes it very fun and interesting by throwing in these weird, interesting situations, applying economics along with it. And then you get these weird facts, pretty much. And it's a great read for anyone, pretty much. I would say as, as long as you're in high school or you're older, you should be able to understand it. So it's kind of geared towards any audience. And I just think it's very fascinating because it just goes into very quirky, fun uh, statistical studies on different things. For instance, uh, you will get things like, um, how come if you charge late fees for a babysitting clinic, you get more people showing up late then before you charge late fees and then it goes into sumo wrestlers and how they cheat and the statistics to prove that they cheat and all sorts of stuff and I think it's a very fascinating book and today I want to talk mainly about gratitude and how it relates to this book so I'm big on gratitude it's one of those things that I found through reading books on the science of happiness how you achieve happiness, listening to lectures on happiness, as well as a lot of self-help, self-development books, and books from very successful people who have accumulated enormous wealth in their lives or just gone on to do other great things. One big common thread that a lot of these books have is gratitude. Uh, one thing that most of them say is like, you gotta stop complaining, you gotta stop blaming others for your surroundings or your situation. Uh, and you got to be more grateful for what you do have in life and stop focusing on the negative and stop complaining about, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, and bringing in jealousy and envy and resentment and feel very grateful for what you do have because you overlook all the uh, things that you have in life that make you really lucky. And it's tough to do that, but when you start reading and hearing enough of these stories about these homeless people um, who make it rich because they hustle and they work hard, you start to realize that, okay, all these complaints are at the end of the day pretty stupid because at the end of the day, you already lucked out just by being born in the United States. I mean, sure, if you've gone through deep emotional childhood trauma and stuff like that, I mean, one could argue you didn't luck out. But even then, one could argue you did because uh, I was reading Tony Robbins the other day and I was listening to him on my iPhone as well. And one thing he said was he did a comparison of two people. First, you don't know who they are. And one of them inherited a lot of money and had everything aligned from the time he was born. He was born into a rich family, got all the connections, went to a good school and ended up, I think it was a drug addict and didn't really amount to anything in life. And then there's another female who was abused as a child, had a, a pregnancy by the time she was like 18, but then when the child was born, it was um, a failed birth, and the child died, and she went through sexual and physical abuse, and she ended up becoming one of the first female bill billionaires in the world, and is a very well-renowned talk show host, and her name is Oprah Winfrey. So again, like the more and more you learn about these stories, the more incredible it is. And um, I can't do a full review on Freakonomics because I have not finished the book yet. I've gotten a decent way through. And I really do think this is a great, interesting book for people who are looking for a little bit of fun and a little bit of education as well. As far as how practical this book is, um, I don't know about that. But before we get to that, I want to talk about one specific story on, in the book. And it talks about the Ku Klux Klan and how it was founded and how basically it started out with just six lawyers who went together and they formed this clan and it seemed to be this sort of brotherhood hanging out thing. And they wore white clothing and within a decade it had risen to this enormous terrorist establishment where they went around killing people, raping people, slaughtering people, um, all sorts of stuff. And eventually it died, and then it was reborn again, and then it sort of died out as well. 
And the point of that was that um, it just went into a good enough amount of detail on the history of that time, which really isn't that long ago. It's It was less than 100 years ago, which is really scary because 100 years isn't a long time. Like it may seem like a long time, but when you look at the history of the human civilization, 100 years, I mean, technically it was only 70-ish years away uh, when the clan was in its full flow. So that's what? A couple generations, one or two generations. So your grandparents or your great-grandparents, they were around at the time this thing was in full flow. And it's one of those things where it really makes you grateful for where you are in life because um, it just reminds you how tough it was to be an African-American during those times. Uh, if you were black uh, at that time, like it was tough. So I'm just very grateful to be born in this environment. Like sure, I do have a lot of problems and it's tough to focus on the things you should be grateful for rather than things you, sh you shouldn't be grateful for uh, that can easily make you resentful or angry. But I mean, just to be born in a economy and env environment where you're not scared of being raped or killed or lynched or um, hurt or stabbed or, ra or I said raped already or all this stuff and discriminated against and hurt and your opportunities are close to nothing and even if you hustle and work hard there's zero chance at that time and age that you could become a millionaire or a billionaire or really impact the world and all those things wrapped together, it was accepted. So the fact that people looked at you as a lesser person and treated you not as an equal and you had less opportunities and all that stuff, it was just like taken for granted. It wasn't like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. These people were acting like this is how it should be. And then back before then, there's slavery. And then even past that, there's decades of segregation and discrimination. And even now, there's still problems. I recently learned that, um, I think it was Arizona, they finally accepted the, they finally appealed, uh, I think it was segregation, Some something crazy, like in the 1980s, which is like, what, 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and that just shocks me to no end. And so I really don't know what to say. Um, uh, let me know if that statistic's true. I don't know if that's true. Check me on that. And so, yeah, long story short, it's, you know, you should be very grateful for what you do have. And um, I guess it reminds you in a way that the world, even to this day, it's unjust. And you cannot go about assuming that everything's fair in life. Because if you come out and think, oh, I should be given this, or I should have all these opportunities from the get-go. You can get very lazy, you can get very complacent, and you can end up just sitting there. It's good to fight for these civil rights and for people to have them, and I think we should all have them, um, and we're working towards them, but I do think there's still racism, discrimination, and all sorts of stuff going on, and now there's reverse discrimination, and uh, females pretending to be raped uh, to get money from males and all sorts of different problems. Um, but times are better than they have been in the past. And I, I'm just very grateful to be born uh, in this time and age. Um, and that's the main message. I really hope you don't take any of the specific things I said and get into a huge argument in the comments. The point is to be grateful for what you have. Are you grateful? Let me know in the comments. Yes or no. And list at least one thing you're grateful for. So that's all I really want to say in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Oh yes, and then back to the point about how practical Freakonomics is. If you're looking to actually learn something that can be practically applied, I think the only thing really so far based on what I've read is um, the fact that statistics um, can be used to s pull out and f figure out how things work. And also you can kind of start learning some lessons from uh, the different case studies used in uh, the story. Some of them are kind of quirky and interesting. But I think generally speaking, you can learn maybe some life lessons 
from some of these case studies that can be applied to maybe business or selling stuff or just honesty and ethics in real life. Uh, for instance, the babysitter dilemma, it can kind of teach you how you can use statistics and you can also um, realize the psychology of how people work and why even if you start charging money, that won't prevent the problem of people coming in late to pick up their kids because now you have exchanged something that was really just about human sentiment and human trust and bonds with, oh, I can buy back my guilt with money. And as far as the uh, ethics go, the sumo wrestler case in the book is a great example of how ethics work and how, um, you know, you can't always assume everyone is honest and real. you can realize that there's collusion there and statistics can prove it. And you can also figure out that, okay, um, now that I realize that whether I'm doing this or that, they have different case studies to show you different examples of collusion and bribery and people cheating or stealing from the system. Um, you can use that as a basis or model for understanding real life. You, ha you can understand that people aren't always going to tell the truth. There's gonna be a lot of cheating. And accepting that and figuring out models and strategies to work around that based off what you learn from this can possibly be useful to you. But again, I am stretching it. I would say generally speaking, a lot of it is really just for the fun of it. And you do get very quirky, weird, and fun slash interesting uh, case studies backed up with statistics and very light, basic, easy to understand economics to help you along. So I really recommend this book to anyone who's interested in uh, this sort of stuff. If you're interested in uh, dabbling in economics or business or I mean, it's not really business. It's a little bit of statistics, a little bit of science, um, but it's really just intro friendly for anyone who's had at least a high school education. So I recommend, I recommend the book and I will leave a link in the description if I remember, um, if you want to check out that book on Amazon. Um, and that's all I got to say. Um, thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.